But if I do this, I cover it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we are joined by UT RGV head coach Larry Tidwell. Uh, coach, can you please talk about your team and uh, expectations for this season? Uh, yes, and it looks good. Very thorough. <laughs> Our team is uh, right now we're going through a lot of growing pains. We have a lot of new players. We have uh, Shante Goff returning. I mean, she's an outstanding point guard for us. She's moved from the three to the one. And so our guard play is going to be a little bit different, a little bit faster paced. And we've got Hilda Carson's daughter at the four. She may move to a three. So we've got a lot of pieces to the puzzle we're trying to solve right now. But we're getting great effort and work out. I've got some that have had, they, they have nagging injuries. And I just want to try to get everybody healthy and see if we can't get to where we need to be by a month when the season starts. Uh, you took last year's team to the postseason for the first time in school history. Uh, what did it take to take the, your program to the level that you're, you received those postseason invitations? Well, I, I tell you, it, it, it took a, a, a lot of hard work from the girls. I mean, I've been coaching for quite a few years, 41 to be exact, and I haven't scored a point, grabbed a rebound, had an assist or a steal. It's about your players. And our players really reacted and really decided they wanted to get something done. They wanted to set history in the Valley. Uh, in the course of two years, we've set 59 school records. And last year, the first postseason ever, and uh, first winning season in 32 years of Division One. And so we've had to come a long way. We feel like we got the, the gorilla off of our back that had a piano on his back. I mean, it was, a, it was a, a lot to fight as you did recruit and things along that line. But going to postseason was nice. Um, you know, we got in the championship game of the WAC tournament. We were very proud of that. Um, got beat by a very good New Mexico State game. They played excellent basketball and, and really represented us well when they played Maryland, too. I thought they played Maryland really well. Mark did a great job as well as a team. But getting to the postseason, oh, that was, that was nice. Because now you're getting a little bit of respect, not only in the Valley, but you're getting respect in, across Texas, across southwest part of the United States. Uh, I guess one of the compliments we've had, we've had uh, a, a, a Big 12 school dropped us off of their schedule, and so did one from the, uh, another conference. So that are FBS. I guess is that the big is that the term? Is it FBS or, or the big football power conferences? Yeah. Well, so we've had a couple of people drop us, and we had to end up picking up. Uh, last week we picked up Syracuse to uh, fill our schedule. Oh yeah, go to the Carrier Dome. That's a lot of fun. So in January the first, so it'll be nice and cold up there. So, but we're going to play a schedule that is just unrelenting. I mean, it's relentless what we're trying to do. We've got 18 games on the road, 11 at home. So we're going to have to grow up in a hurry. The women's game seeing some big changes this season with the switch from two 20-minute halves to four 10-minute quarters. What are your thoughts on the changes and how do you think it'll affect the game? Well, I, I think the thing that you've got to really do with that, uh, particularly with the way that um, my understanding is after the fifth foul, it becomes a two-shot foul. You better you better teach your kids how to play defense and have their hands off because a lot of the ticky tack fouls are going to catch you. You know if you don't set really good screens, if you know you don't get set or something. I, I think the uh, the fact that we're going to shoot a lot of free throws is is going to make an impact on the game. Um, and I think that people are going to have to change their defense a little bit. And you may see more zone defenses now because of the foul trouble that you could get in. Ourselves, we're going to try to play 94 foot again and see what we can do and have to make adjustments. But I think it'll have, a, I think it'll have an effect on the game and how it's perceived. And, and I think there's a lot of this reasons where I think people want to see more points scored, and I think they will. Um, junior Shante Goff um, is only 122 points away from 1,000 for her career. How does having a proven scorer on the floor make your job easier? Oh, she's just an extension of me on the floor as far as, uh, as, far as a player. I mean, I've moved her to point guard. I mean, she's going to have the ball in her hands 
about 90% of the time, and she's going to make things happen for me. Uh, she's a great talent. She's a great basketball player, and she listens. And all I need to do is I need to get about 15 pounds of muscle on her because uh, – she burns a lot of she burns a lot of calories fast. I mean, she's so fast. But I've been coaching for quite a while, 41 years, and I've, I've been fortunate enough. I had over 30 kids that have gone on to play pro basketball. Uh, you know, at the, either in Europe or in the WNBA, and, and she may be the fastest young lady I've ever coached. I mean, she is jet quick, and if we can get that muscle on her, I think she'll she'll have a really good future in front of her for a postseason after she finishes college. Uh, UTRGV has a new television deal that's uh, going to get a number of your home games on the air throughout Texas. Uh, how do you expect that to affect recruiting in-state? Well, I mean, it's, um, it, as I took over the program, and, and like I said, it, it hasn't, it, it's not a household name in the state of Texas, to say the least, because, you know, they've never had a winning season previous to this past year in Division One, So a lot of people are going to get a chance and they're going to be channel surfing or something and then they may see us and they uh, may like what they, you know, they might like what they see and what we're trying to do. But it's always helps when you're on the, uh, when you're on TV. It's it's like when we played in the championship game at the, the WAC, gosh, I had so many calls, so many texts and things along that line and then people you know, would come up and say, hey, coach, man, you were on TV. And I said, yeah, New Mexico State hit a shot at the buzzer to beat us, but by 21. So <laughs> it's one of those things of where you just, uh, you appreciate the fact that you get to be on TV, to be seen, and uh, our, our TV package that we have at our place, the TV package we have at the WAC is, is outstanding and it's much appreciated. And it is getting our game out there and it is helping us grow the game in the Valley in particular. This is the 35th anniversary of NCAA women's basketball. Um, what's your favorite memory? Favorite memory. Now remember, I'm, I've been coaching 41, so I, I can remember the old IAEW, or I think yeah. it's what it was. But a lot of my memories growing up involved uh, Jody Conrad at the University of Texas. I thought she's uh, it's probably the, the best pioneer we've had for the women's game of basketball, her and, co of course, uh, Coach Summit. And uh, watching those two coach and walk down the sidelines, and, I mean, those are just really great moments for me. Um, I coached in high school 17 years, very fortunate, had some really good records. But as you get into college, um, fortunate enough to have been to eight NCAA tournaments and then five other postseason tournaments. and. Going to the NCAA tournament is, is just, words can't express how exciting that is because it puts you as one of the elite teams in the country and that's what you try to, that's what you try to attain. You and your team seem to participate in, in a lot, uh, a number of community service projects. Could you just talk about what that means to you and um, how you get your team involved in that sort of stuff? Well, uh, I've been there now two and a half years and starting our third season, uh, we've done over 3,000 hours of community service. Uh, I believe in service above self. And, but as we get into it, it helps us just as much as it helps the ones we're trying to help because it, it makes these kids realize that they, they, how lucky they are to have their health, how lucky they are to be able to play the great game of basketball, go all over the country, have things taken. And I take them into children's hospitals where kids suffer from cancer, leukemia. I take them to uh, homeless shelters where people don't do that. Um, you know, they just don't have anything. Uh, one of my favorite ones is uh, Be the Match Bone Marrow Registry. Uh, we've, read, we've registered over 3,000 people in the Valley. And uh, so far we've had five matches that have helped save five people's lives. And that's, that's really cool. We got that coming up again in the uh, in the next couple of weeks, but we also active in the Boys and Girls Club. Anything that we can do with law enforcement, we're we're part of that. Blue Santa, things along that line, and it's it's just if we don't teach our young ladies, our young people how to give back now, then they won't know how to give back later on. So we're really into that because one, 
I want, my teams are always going to play hard. They're always going to play emotional, but also with what we what we stand for, we're also playing spiritual. And when you can get a team to play and have that team spirit, it makes you uh, makes your chances of winning a lot better. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Okay, now do I get to ask y'all questions or anything, or is this uh, just directed one way? Huh? Is that what it is? 